Hello designers, this is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach you how to design, build, customize and enhance your websites. If you're new here, consider subscribing. You may also consider joining our Facebook group to have a better conversation to better interact with me. Let's get into the video. In a previous video, I've showed you 10 new features in Elementor version 2.5 that's going to be released in the first week of March. And one of them is the text editor columns feature. So you can click on the text editor widget, go to style and divide the content into various columns just like that so you can specify the number of columns you want for the content and the text is divided into various columns well the truth is that this is not an elementor specific feature in fact it's a css feature that's been there for a long time and elementor just embraced it even better this is not even limited to text editor widget you can basically apply this css property to any widget or any section or column. Let me show you. So let me remove the styling from this. So I'll just click on this text editor widget under style. I just set it to default and let me click on advanced. Let me go to custom CSS. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do this with the free version as well. Just wait till the end of the video. So if you're on a pro version, just click on that particular text editor widget, go to selected and the keyword that you type is column. As you can see, there is a property called column count. You can simply click on that and enter a number. And just like that, your text is converted into the columns that you specify. Or four, or one, or two. You can basically divide your content into as many columns as you want by specifying it here. I'm just typing the general code for CSS property. And there may be few prefixes in the description code that I share with you. Don't worry, they are for different browsers just to make this code work on different browsers. I'll show you that in a bit. So the first property is column count and the next property is column gap. The same setting that you see in Elementor. So you can specify any width here. Instead of specifying pixels, you can also specify it in percentages. So that's a relative value. You can maybe say 4% or any percentage that you want. If you specify a larger percentage, the columns will have more gap between them. And the next property is column rule. It adds a ruler between the columns separated by this space. So let's add a rule or a ruler between columns. So first you specify the width of the rule and second you specify the type can be dashed, dotted, solid, groove and a lot. I'll leave all the values in the description. So you can have dotted as well if you want. And then finally you can specify the color of the rule. So maybe we can have a one pixel wide or one pixel wide uh, dotted border which is blue in color or you can have a gray one to get that newspaper like look instead of pixels you can also specify vertical height vh so just by specifying vertical height it will add a length or width to that particular property well what is vertical height it's basically one percent of the height of your browser window so here my browser window is a bit small so let me resize it and you can see even the height of the border changes because it's relative value with respect to my browser window. So if I specify 2VH here, it's 2% of the vertical height. So whatever my vertical height is, it will take 2% of it and add that value to this particular column rule. So you don't need this. I just need a one pixel dotted border with a gray color to add that neat little separation between the columns. And to make this code responsive, you can add custom breakpoints that I taught you. I'll leave a link to that in the description. So you can apply custom breakpoints to this to make this look good on all devices. Specifically, you can add custom breakpoints that you already have for your devices. So you can add a custom breakpoint for this and change the values so that this particular columns look good on tablet. They actually look good on tablet, but they look horrible on mobile so you can add custom media queries 
and have this shown only to desktop users and you can change the values for mobile users and tablet users using custom CSS breakpoints. I've taught that in another video. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Okay, so this is great. And as I told you, this is a CSS property. Just like many other or most of the CSS properties, these are universal, meaning you can apply this code to literally anything that you see on your browser window or anything that you build with Elementor. So you can simply copy this code and watch what happens. Here I have a neat little section. I'll just click on this section, go to advanced and I'll paste this custom CSS code and watch what happens. The whole section is again divided into columns. Because as I told you, this code is not specific to just the text editor. It can be any content and you can divide any content into columns. I know this looks horrible. So let's remove the code from here. I'll cut it from here. And this is a price table. So I'll just click on this and let me paste it here. And you can see that the price table looks horrible even here. So you don't want to paste the code even here. Maybe you can paste it under this widget. So let's go to custom CSS. And just like that, it's applied to this. You can also paste it to the whole column. So let me click on this custom CSS paste. If I copy and paste the style from this text editor widget into my heading widget, you can see that even my heading widget is divided into three columns. So if you have a bigger heading, you can have three different headings aligned with the columns down below. So you can use it however you want. So this code along with custom CSS breakpoints will help us achieve great looking content separated into columns. So play with it and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And finally, if you're using the free version of Elementor, and if you want to make this code work on your free version as you won't have custom CSS feature in your free version, you can simply click on this, drag an HTML widget, search for HTML. It's this one, not the custom HTML from WordPress. It's Elementor's own HTML widget. Drag it, add to style tags. So just type what I'm typing on the screen. Just pause it here and type it. So once you have these style tags, it means CSS. These style tags stand for CSS. That will be applied onto the page. So we want the code for this. So whatever code I share for this text edit widget, just paste it in here. So click on this text edited widget, go to advanced and give it a unique name. So I'll just call it. So this name should not be used anywhere else on this page. So just give it a unique name. So my text one, two, three, I'll just call it my text one, two, three. So under CSS classes, just enter this name, copy the name, click here and replace selector with dot followed by your name. And just like that, the code will be applied to this particular widget. And you don't even have to worry about this HTML widget adds. It won't change the layout since we just added the style which is effectively CSS. So when I minimize this, it will be completely invisible, but it's responsible for the layout or this particular code. So if, if you have the free version, so drag HTML widget to style tags, copy and paste the same code or change anything that you want in here, replace selector with dot followed by the name that you gave for this text edited widget under advanced. So that's how you work make this work on the free version of Elementor. If you get this server error 403 error, deactivate your WordPress plugin or any other security plugin, update the code and then reactivate it so that you'll have all the security features. These security plugins think that the code that you type in here is actually malware. So that's the reason why they avoid or they don't let you change the code by using this HTML widget. But don't worry, just deactivate it. Once you type all the code, just update it and activate your security plugin black, 
you won't have any issues that's it for now and that's it for now and hope you guys like this video if you did make sure to give a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and if you need anything else don't hesitate to ask i'm ready to help you catch you in the next video peace